Welcome everyone to the first ever Phillips Mill Art Talk. I'm Laura Womack and I'm the co-chair of the 91st Art Show at Phillips Mill. We are very excited to offer this opportunity to get to know more about the artists who are in our show and their work. In the before time, before COVID, that's how, that's I guess how people are talking about it now, the before time, we invited artists to come to the mill and we called it Meet the Artists. And uh, we asked all our, our artists to uh, come in and meet members of the public. And since we can't be at the, at the mill this year, this is our effort to make that opportunity come alive during the pandemic. So um, we're delighted that all of you have joined us for our inaugural art talk. It's an experiment as you've already seen. So uh, we appreciate your forbearance as we grapple with these new challenges. Um, we're so happy that Bets Green and Jim Green have agreed to be our first guest artists. Uh, they are longtime exhibitors at Phillips Mill and both have won awards in the show. This year, Jim is the recipient of the award in honor of Edie Wells Bristol, a mill artist who also loved color. And Jim studied at the Tyler School of Art, as did Betts. They both have exhibited widely and won many awards. Uh, too many for me to go into here, but we have their bios and artist statements at the phillipsmill.org website where you can see they're, they have each have three works in the show as well. We'll be talking about those today. I did want to say that both Betts and Jim uh, will be teaching next year at the Norristown Art League. Uh, for those of you who like to take art classes, they're husband and wife. And um, that's, uh, I think it's interesting how different your work is from each other. So we'll be talking a little bit about that. We also have uh, the Phillips Mill Art Committee's very own Jen McHugh. She's been leading our social media campaign that we put together this year to support the art show moving online so you all would know where to find it. And she's been providing a steady stream of artwork, artist quotes, and mill history on both Facebook and Instagram. And we're very grateful to you, Jen, for that. Um, so this is, Part of our this art talk is part of our expansion of those efforts and uh, Jen is here she is our technical person and she will be fielding your questions so please write your questions in the Q&A or the chat field on your zoom screen and um, I'd like to take those questions as we go along so please go ahead and type them in at your as they come to you and if we can work them in, we will. So, Bets and Jim, thank you so much for agreeing to be with us today, especially as we're trying out something new. Well, it's fun to be guinea pigs, and uh, thank <laughs> you for inviting us. This is, this is exciting. Thank you for your opportunity. Yes, Very thanks good. for all your hard work. Uh, so, both of you teach um, art classes, so I know you're comfortable talking about your work. But this is a new format. Have you, have either of you been participating in the growing number of art offerings online? Um, you mean uh, instructing online? In, yeah, there's instructing and, um, you know, meet the artist sort of things. And no. Have you had, yeah. no, we were trying to avoid all this to tell you the truth until you called <laughs> on. <laughs> and then we had to learn something new. We have a but problem it's with social good. media. We haven't, we haven't yeah. figured it out yet or even tried. So, well, okay. yeah. I guess there's not a lot of interest there for us, although we know we should be doing it. So thank you for forcing us into this. Just to let you know, our websites are probably about two years old. Or what is it a website or it's a website, right? Yeah, your website. See, I don't even know what it's called. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're about two years old. So we've had we have many works we've done in the last two years that we haven't even shown online. So uh, eventually we'll be putting them in. <clears throat> okay, great. Um, so um, I'm just wondering what it's like to be a married couple who are both artists. Do you talk a lot about art theory? Uh, do you, I mean, is, is that what you discuss at the dinner table or do you try to keep it separate? 
Not at all. It's a part of our lives. We talk about it whenever we want to, different aspects of it. Um, not just art theory, but we, we, um, we look at each other's works. Um, we wander into each other's studios, maybe not as much as we should sometimes, and, <laughs> and um, you know, comment on the works, what's working, what's not. Uh, we ask each other. Um, it's, it's a, it, we're, we're fortunate enough the last few years to be able to live as artists. So it's really nice to have that in common. And, um, it took yeah. time to develop that. When Beth said we wandered into each other's studios, that was a little hazardous in the beginning. <laughs> it's you like, don't look now, don't look at this yet. <laughs> criticism was a little hard to take. But, you know, as we got older, we started to uh, adjust to that. And Beth will make comments about my work and, Actually, it's very helpful, and I, I think that I'm more helpful. I'm as helpful to you, too, as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, but, and as far as talking about art, we're all, I think we're all, we live it. <laughs> yeah, it, which is nice. Yeah. Do you find that you have influence on each other's artwork? Oh, I'm sure. Even if it's self, subconscious. I think she learns a lot off of me. No, <laughs> no, we, it's true. I think, I think we, uh, I think we learn a lot off of each other, and uh, that's the nice part is it's uh I, I don't think we could live with each other i think it's i'm speaking for both of us i don't think we could live with uh somebody a non-artist non right now somebody that's yeah, creating um, because it affects all aspects of life too i um um i, th I think we're just creative people when we live life maybe more creatively i don't know because of it and um you know, I'm sure we do influence each other for mm -hmm. sure in a lot of ways. And it teaches you to see and look. We're, when, when we ride out and we're looking to take pictures, uh, we're just riding around in general, we'll see something and uh, make comments on it in reference to art. Yeah, or what color would you make that, what, what colors yeah. would you use to make that sky or that tree, you know, in the fall it's, and such, but yeah. It's a very boring conversation. <laughs> no, it isn't, that's us, we're always talking. No, we, we love it, it's, and that's what keeps us together, I think. Mm -hmm. So you both went to Tyler. Did you know each other there? We met at Tyler playing volleyball. And okay, so well, were you guess. together from that time? Say yes. Again. Yes, were we together since that time? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, we have. Yeah. So, Jim, you went to Tyler, you studied art, um, you went into the uh, construction business. Um, what was that like for you? Uh, it seems like I'm, I'm assuming, Bets, and we'll talk about it in a minute, that you were able to pursue your art career directly. Jim, you went into construction and now you're coming back to it. Yeah, it, it wasn't a career, it was a pastime. And uh, it, <clears throat> I actually paid my way through college, I can call it college. I paid my way through uh, art school um, doing uh, construction and I eventually bought the business my, my father started the business and I um, had, he had some, there's some difficulties and I bought him, bought him out in time, but I've always pursued it as a pastime, really enjoyed it. And uh, it was, it's really the only thing that kept my mind sane. Wake up in the middle of the night and I would paint and uh, all my troubles would partially go away. So now I'd start the day working again and come back and do it all over again. Mm -hmm. Beth, would you say that you were able to pursue your art career from the time of Tyler? You were a professional illustrator. I don't know if you consider that part of your art or uh, separate. And also, I know the two of you have two children, and often that is uh, the mother oversees that. So would you say you were able to pursue your art career? Um to the extent that running a household and children, you know, taking care of children allowed me to, yes. Um, one thing that having children led me to was for a, a while um, doing a lot of children's portraits and um, house portraits with just meeting, you know, our, our children's friends and, and their family. So, um, so yeah, in between taking care of all that, yes, I was able to pursue it uh, more than Jim was at the time, uh, you know, for a lot of years, 30 years, what have you. But I think, but I think the fact that I was kept in the arts, it also kept him interested as well. 
and he didn't let it fall uh, by the wayside too much. And it, I, I think just because I was um, then getting into shows and getting into different places, it, it helped both of us um, to continue on with it when he did get out of his business. And so we had kind of a leg up, um, both of us, and now we can do it together, which is really nice. Yeah, Bets, Bets has always inspired me when I came home and seen her painting. First of all, I felt good that she was actually doing something she really enjoyed. And um, it helped me a lot. So, nice. <laughs> well, I know you both have um, prepared some of your works for us to look at today, and I'd like to do that. Um, I'd like to start with Jim's award-winning um, steel stacks, uh, which I see in the background there. Yeah, right. Fabulous. Right. No, Bets, don't go away. We want your <laughs> input as well. <laughs> um, so, um, Jim, this is such an extraordinary color palette that you've chosen, and I saw it in your portfolio piece, one of your portfolio pieces as well. Um, and it's also a really unusual uh subject matter the steel stacks in bethlehem uh tell us a little bit about your inspiration for this painting well first of all i like all forms of art and uh, i've really am inspired by and i've always been inspired by impressionism and uh, german expressionism and also, also gothic art uh, there's something about that quality of um, flatness and um, craziness that goes on, but with Impressionism, it's all about color and light and German Expressionism. It's about distort, dis, distorting the image to make it more interesting, to not only make the image more interesting, but throw it out of the, the picture plane. I try to tell this to my students too in classes. You try to keep everything a mystery, a little bit of a mystery. There's a lot of stuff you're not supposed to put in. You put in too much where you put it all in one little spot in the center of the, can in the can canvas, it kind of just, um, dead. It, it's dead, it doesn't work. So anyway, as far as this one's concerned, this was like, this was a real challenge. And uh, if, can everybody see this picture, uh, Laura? Yeah, I was just gonna say if, um, Jen, can we have that um, up beside, can, if you can share a screen with the image of the painting, that would be great. Uh, and then we'll take a look at it. And uh, Bets, we, we want your thoughts about it as well. Um, but it would be nice to be able to look at the painting. So here yeah, we go. Bet, yeah, Bets, really, this is the one my wife really loves. I, this is probably my favorite painting of his right now. Um, I love the perspective. It, it really, the stacks really look like they're going up into the distance, into the, it, it has, it has a largeness about it. It ha it's, it's showing the rust and um, it's, it's, I think it, it looks like what it is. Well, yeah, if, I, if, if anybody's never seen Bethlehem Steel and his, his steel stacks, I encourage you to go up there because you'll come around a corner and you'll see this behemoth, this thing that looks like it's from uh, Eastern Europe that's, it's been just discarded and it's nothing but rust. And, and rust has a kind of a, a nice uh, color, it has a neat color, has neat perspective. And the, all the reds and the oranges, there's no browns in this picture at all, it's all color. And the deep blues that, that are the opposite of the orange and, and the purples, they are opposite of the yellows. That's the deepness and then you're trying to bring it out. It's also a flat image. But when Betts was saying about the the perspective of this, this is a very hard, this is actually a very complicated painting. And you can't paint this, you can't paint this as a flat on image where the, the, um, the lines, the lines going up can't be straight. They can't be equal distance from each other. In order to get this perspective of largeness, I had to come up with, I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. So I kept doing drawings and I always do these little pin, they're called uh, thumbnail drawings. And I think most of the artists we're talking to right now understand what thumbnail drawings are. And you're really supposed to do a thumbnail drawing prior to doing a painting. It's, it's a smaller uh, area to concentrate on. So this is, this is a large, larger painting. But anyway, what I was doing wrong is that the perspective, these things had to go up at an angle. 
if everybody can, can people see what I'm doing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's the it's three point okay. perspective. The three point perspective going up. Not only not, and that wasn't working all the way mm -hmm. either. It, it had to actually go back in plane. So this thing looks like it was moving. I wanted to give it volume. It, it's like a behemoth. It's just huge. And when you see it for the first time, you'll just absolutely be amazed. So. Uh, Plus, Jimmy also had to, there's also so much more there, and he had to figure out what to include and what to exclude right. to make it work as well. Yeah, that's just right. There's a lot of, there's, sometimes what you don't put in a painting adds to the painting, and that's going to be, I think, if I can explain that, is that if, when you go up in here, I mean, if you go up and you see this, there's so many pipes, valves, manifolds, uh, ladders, support structure, there's so much there that you you can't put it all in. You have to just make notations. So if you look at this really closely, and actually all my paintings are meant to be viewed from a distance. And that's how the Impressionist paintings are actually um, constructed. So that being said is, uh, it, I, 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 I think in order to make this painting really work, it, it, it Partially it works, but because it's on a smaller scale, I would like to make a huge painting, mm -hmm. but I got nowhere to hang it. <laughs> <laughs> We'd so, love to see it. I hope you do it. <laughs> well, well, I don't know if it'll fit on this computer. But <laughs> we'll go anyway, next. Yeah, if anybody, if anybody's interested, really go up to Steel Stacks. It's just a monument. There's no way they can take it down. It would probably cost 10 times more to take it down than it was to build part of that place. And uh, I'm sure the land, the land is absolutely uh, in top, uh, uh, screwed up with toxins and all kinds of stuff. So it's actually a, a monument that will never disappear. But anyway, that's it. Okay, well, let we that's um, we've got some questions here. I think there are also a couple of comments. So, um, Jen, let's have a couple of the comments and then give them a chance to uh, respond to the questions, if you will. Okay, the first comment that we have, can you hear me? Yeah, is uh, from Irene Lewis and said, "We all missed you, Mr. and Mrs. Betts. I mean, <laughs> Mr. and Miss Green." LOL. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, she was yeah, one of, yeah, yeah, I yeah, know yeah. Irene, yes, nice lady. Yes. Thank you, Irene. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first question from Francisco Silva is, Jim, with regards to painting right. process, it looks like you paint a la prima. Have you experimented with glazing? Glazing? Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't, I don't really glaze anything. I, the, uh, but that is a good question. Uh, this painting here, and probably most of my paintings, painting the canvas more than um, more than wood, and you could I paint. I also paint on wood as well. Canvas, when you paint on canvas, and I'm sure it's just a, a natural thing that happens. It, it sinks in. Paint actually compresses and sinks in, and it flattens out. Okay, that's why in in, in time you varnish the painting to bring out all the colors. So this painting was painted over and over and over again to get, to get uh, the, the, color, colors. the color variations that I wanted. It wasn't glazed, it was painted over. I, uh, if I glazed it, then it would be a, it might, it might be a whole different look. And I don't want that, I want that that roughness. If you look at this really close, now that's another thing that the German expressionists were very in tune to is brush strokes and showing that that painting process, which is kind of neat. It's, it's uh, there's actually dimensionality to, to the painting when you do that. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some great questions here too, Jen. Let's let's go back to the Q and A. Sure. Um, one is specific to steel stacks. It says, Jim, how long did it take you to paint steel stacks? It's magnificent. Were you inspired at all by Charles Sheeler's paintings of industrial scenes? I sorry to say, I don't know Charles Sheeler. I, 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 <clears throat> I don't know who that is, but who I, what I was inspired by. Um, 
I was, I, I, you know, I'm inspired pretty much by everything at any particular time. There's no specific thing that I do. I don't, I don't want to create the same kind of image all the time. It gets, it gets kind of um, formulaic, okay, so to speak. This was a challenge, this particular one. I've, what inspired me is all, all my life I've been in construction. I've been in uh, done metal work, so it was my business. But anyway, uh, I just like how man can build something like this is pretty incredible and how it all fits together. Just to actually design, a, a, a design something like this is beyond, beyond something I can even imagine. So that's what inspired me is actually when I went around and saw it is just the whole uh, uh, construction part of it and the colors. Um, I, I think I build my own inspiration at times. So does that, does that help? Does that work with the question? Yeah, I think that's great. And actually, it, it leads me back to the one of the questions I really wanted to ask you as uh, coming from the Phillips Mill Art Show. Um, people think of us as being, you know, a, a impressionist landscape. And so I'm just, uh, we, I mean, every year we have different style of paintings in the show, but with that, because of our history, which we're very proud of, people, I think that that reputation stays with us. So I'm so interested that you <laughs> you entered a painting that is, you know, so industrial. Uh, did you have any hesitation about that? Some people think that only certain kinds of paintings get into our. You know, I don't. This might sound really weird. I don't take my art real serious. Uh, I don't think I take a lot of things too serious anymore. If you do, you kind of bottle bottlenecks you. Um. No, I mean, I just wanted to uh, show something. Uh, I just wanted to show it because it was a brand new painting I did and I was kind of interested in it. And your lighting quality over there at the mill is really good. And I think if more people, and I'm not saying they don't, took more time to actually look at some of the work that was shown over at Phillips Mill, they understand that it's, all, it's really all over the board. It's just not impressionistic. There's a lot of things going on. And I think we've been in the show often enough at this point to know that. Yeah. So, and I'm not worried about putting something in and, and winning an award in all honesty. It, it's, it's, not, it's not about that. It's about a challenge to myself. Yes, and maybe what we're yeah. proud of at the time. Yeah. Maybe getting somebody to say, uh, uh, hey, that's really neat. That kind of makes my day more than anything. Yeah. And we've met a lot of really nice people up there mm -hmm. in that Phillips and I'll just let you know. Yes. We have some it, good friends there. Yeah, the jurors really respond. They want a, a variety of a varied show as well. I have one more question for you, Jim, and then I want to make, uh, well, I've got, we, we all have tons of questions for you, but we also want to talk with Betts as well about her work. Um, but I can't not ask you this question, since you are interested in industrial shapes, and when we were talking earlier uh, offline, you mentioned that, um, you know, you like uh, uh, objects and structural structural objects, and I just think from your um, career in uh, construction, is that what, it, it, does that contribute to your preference for those subjects or your interest in those subjects? And, and then the distortion, I think, is, that you mentioned that, you're, uh, you, that keeps you interested in the subject matter seems to go against the precision that I think would be required with those solid, you know. Those if I may interject, he understands what he's looking at when he sees these structures too. He has an understanding of what he's looking at that a lot of people would not. And I think that's one of the attractive, what attra one of the things that attracts you to. Can I to. put up just one picture to show sure. yeah. a, a, a change in the venue here? Okay. <laughs> we can this see one. it better. Yeah, this one here. When you're, uh, I, when I when I look at things, it's going to be hard to understand. When I look at things, I see things in um, not as they are, but as in shapes and shapes, basically. And uh, this one here is from. Uh, you have that on the slide too. Yeah, that on the slide. Email, okay, email. yeah, yeah uh, from the we went, we went on a riverboat cruise up the um, Danube. Danube. And there's kind of a. Um, a, um, I, I can't think now. All of a sudden, my mind went. <laughs> no, um, an organic, an organicness mm -hmm. to this. Where if you go to Europe, you'll see these buildings that are actually, they're not like our buildings, like this. They actually come together like that. 
become part of the mound. They become, no, they become part of themselves. Uh, and, and actually, they're, you see roof lines overlapping other roof lines in other parts of buildings that they don't even, that people don't even own. It's all like a, a cohesive thing. So I was trying to make this look like something that was, um, I don't know if I'm going off track here or not. I'm, I even forgot your question. But, uh, <laughs> We're just exploring though. No, I, that, that, I think that did it, yeah. Um, I'm gonna slip in one more question. Um, Jen, you had something for us and then we're gonna go to Betts. Uh, yes, actually one of the viewers would like to see the work behind you, which I think is silo and barn, which I think you sent me, we have an image of it. So I can share yep. that or unless you want to pull it off the wall, let me know. Uh, do you have an image of that? Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll do that too. While he's doing that, I just want to say, Bets and Jim, you're getting a lot of really nice comments in the... Oh, good. I can sort of see them coming in at the top, but I, I can't concentrate enough to read it, and it's kind of at a distance. Can you see that? Here we go. Here so it is. Far. <laughs> okay, and what was the question? Yeah, I don't, I don't know the question. Um, um, they just wanted to know about it, and they thought it was really interesting, and the light is amazing. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we. Uh, this is off of a photograph I took. Uh, Betsy and I were going somewhere, and there's actually. Can you see the original painting? Can I show you the original painting? Yeah. Yeah. We, they we can see you, and we can see the the. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, below that, I don't know if what, what anybody can see, but below that silo, there was actually three cows, and mm -hmm. I didn't like the cows, so I took them out. But that there is. Um, it's like a relic. Uh, it's and I'm used. To, I, I like the way things were built. Were built back then. They were built to last, <laughs> uh, which is kind of. Um, I'm I'm proud of them old guys used to build that kind of stuff. So, uh, but anyway, as it as it as it ages, it actually ages right. It you don't see certain things just all all of a sudden just falling apart. It kind of all. Uh, dies at the same time, but uh, this is this is. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. Although I loved it, the, the policeman stopped me when we were taking photographs. He asked me what I was doing. I told him I was photographing. I was an artist, and he says, "Well, hurry up, take a picture." And um, and then I thanked him, and he thought it was pretty interesting what I was what I was doing. And I went my way, and he went his way. <laughs> so it was pretty nice. Very good. All right, so let's, um, Bets, let's look at uh, some of your work. We'd like to see you both over there if we can. And uh, we're going, I believe we're going to move the iPad uh, while we do that. Um, Jen, oh, okay. We, is that right? Is Was that the plan? Um, well, it can be. Yes. Jen, right. as we um, make the transition, can we take a look at her framed work, if that's available? There we go, Wissahickon Tree Trunk. Okay. So much great art. We don't have enough time to talk about it all. Um, no, I don't think so. I just, I just can't see what I'm looking at right now. Can you see? Can you see yourselves now, Jen? Um, can you? We can can't you see. Them? We see you guys are, we see your shoulders on the edge of the screen and we're looking okay. at the wall yeah. art. Um, there we, yeah, that's good. And we've got, um, for people up, we've got uh, an image of Wissahickon tree trunk, your frame piece in this year's show. Right. So, right. Well, Laura, uh, Laura, yeah, that's, that's Laura could, you, could you give us a, little, a larger view of this so we can see, adjust the camera? Um, I, um, I'm not quite sure for everybody. Oh, there you go. That's perfect. Okay, great. That's good. That's good. Okay. Yeah. So right now, um, the lighting in here is not good, especially with, um, the iPad, but so this is the list I can tree trunk. Um, I change my, my thoughts on my portfolios and my mediums every year or two. So this year, 
um, for, I guess, about the last 10 months, I've been working with a new medium, which is um, oil pastels. And for a few months, I was really into the trees. Look at the camera. Looking at the um, the trees at, in the Wissahickon. So this one, this one, and this one are done in um, oil pastels. And um, what's what I really like about it, as I've been experimenting the last ten months, is that I can um, use them as the crayon and put it directly on the canvas, and I can scrape off, and I can use my fingers to mold. And I can, um, I can uh, use a brush with it and a solvent to use it as, as um, you know, like an old paint. So what I'm thinking about in these pieces is I'm thinking about the, um, the atmosphere of that day, the, um, the weather, the, the feeling that I got from, from the time of day and from those tree trunks. And I really like the gnarliness of uh, the, the piece um, where I can scratch in to get the gnarliness of this old, really, really old beech tree. It's, it's huge. And I only did like a section of it, but it's probably one of the oldest trees um, in that part of the woods. And, um, and I tried to, you know, uh, pump up the color of it. And uh, I don't know what else. <laughs> Well, I, I was in, one of the things I wanted to ask you, uh, Bets, is you also have a very unusual color palette. Uh, we talked about Jim's color palette being unusual. And this piece, it, I mean, uh, again, and through a Zoom, we're not seeing uh, so much color, but there's a lot no. of green in your tree trunk. And there's periwinkle in the shadow, which really surprised me when I was looking at your artwork. Um, I was trying to get the coldness of that winter day in, in with, with some of that, that periwinkle, as you say. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you have a, there's such an atmosphere. I mean, you're working with an unusual uh, color palette uh, as Jim is, but your, it, yours is a very soft, unusual. Mine are more, more muted. I would say a lot of her colors are similar, and I'm sure because I haven't worked with color all that long. If I go into Jimmy's studio and I see what colors he's using and I even just sub subconsciously take that away with me and use it in my own way. And, but they are definitely more muted. My sensibilities are just with more muted colors. So, oh, take it off the thing. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm following Jimmy's directions here. I just thought if you got a chance to see it. Yeah, closer. well, they, they also have it up, had it up on the screen. Oh, but okay. there's, it's really hard to, yeah. yeah, it's still, it's like the iPad picks up the lightest lights and the darkest darks, but a lot of the subtleties are, are missing, but that's, that's okay. Your, your um, focus on media is really interesting as well, but we were, you were talking about how you're combining oil and pastel. Is that usual? I mean, is that a, a, a usual combination? Uh, no, it's called, uh, Laura, the medium is called oil pastel. So it's really, it's- Oh, I see, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, um, I do use pastels and I do use oils, but in this case, the medium is specifically oil pastel. So it's, it's pigment in, um, in a very oily medium. So it doesn't feel like a, a dry pastel. It feels oily. Right. Um, but it, it, and these are Sennelier is, is the brand and it's, it's like working with, with butter as it, as it goes onto the, uh, the canvas. You do have to, um, figure out how to use it. Sometimes I'll pick a medium just because I hear people say, oh, okay, I have this medium, but I have no idea what to do with it. Um, and sometimes I'll, I'll do that uh, for classes. Okay, you guys are having problems with this medium. Let's see what I can do with it. And I've heard other artists say, you know, I'm having a difficult time working with it. And I'll, I'll look it up and not get, I don't know, not too much information online. I, maybe there's more than I think there is, but I'll just play with it and experiment with different ways of using it. And then, um, you know, I can, I can tell other people about it then. But anyway. I have, I have, 
going to using it right now. I have yeah. encountered those oil pastels. I had a brain blip, but um, I have more questions for you, but I know that our attendees do as well. Jen, what, what do people want to know from that? So I see the questions coming in. Um, yes, someone asked, uh, Mary Wills asked, how do you seal oil pastels so that they don't smear? Hi, Mary, and that's a really good question. That's something I've been struggling with. I've been trying to um, look up things on it. My conclusion is after um, like 10 or 11 months of using them now, they really don't ever, they dry, but what happens is if you take a solvent and put it on a paintbrush, it, you can take off whatever is on there. So. And I was reading that if you try to seal it, you can actually get a bloom underneath because you're still, you're sealing in the, um, the oils. So the conclusion I have come to is when I actually start showing these for real, um, I will get non-glare glass and still frame it as you would an oil, but there will be non-glare glass between of uh, the frame and the piece. That, that's, a, that's a good question. That's, that's the only solution I can see with these. Jen, who, what, another question? Uh, we have a question from Karen. Betts, do you work um, plein air and finish in the studio or do you use photos? Um, I can sh show you one that I did a couple of weeks ago. Um, I started a sketch in the field. Um, can you see it? Uh, usually I'll start with charcoal and I'll do that with most of my projects. And then I'll, I will start in on the color piece in my studio. So it. that I get a feeling for what I want to include, what I want to reject. I have, um, I can, I, I usually start with something black and white, no matter what the subject matter, just because, you know, I'm, I can work with the composition. I can work with the, um, with the darks and the lights. And then lastly, when I get to the real, when I get to the finished piece, I can work with the color. And so if I'm doing uh, still life, I, I don't know if, if I'm moving too far ahead here. So if I'm doing, say, uh, silver points, which these are. I'm playing closer. Um, I could do this one. The you bugs. can do this. I'll do this. Because I think. So these all started. These I'm doing totally from life. And this, this is really hard, too. You do have um, the spare parts, the crabs, that maybe you can put up on the screen then too. Jen, do you have the crabs available? This is, I, I wanted yep. to ask you about the fish. Uh, okay, well, starting with the fish, this is, so you've got the, the fish there. Okay, no wait. I think the next, okay, so that's, that's another. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. So Beth, what's your inspiration for these fit? And I, I definitely want to get to your your box of um, still life subject matter there. But the the fish, I just for just I'm going to indulge myself for a minute. My husband grew up on the shore of Lake Erie, and they have these winter mm. dump offs, and uh, which that your fish reminds me so much of that. What was your inspiration? Why did you want to paint or uh, uh, why did you choose this as a subject matter? It's not, again, it's not your usual subject matter. Uh, well, I don't know if it's unusual though either because I've always been collecting things on whatever walk we take, whether it's along the beach, uh, the Chesapeake shoreline, in, um, in the woods. Um, I'm always, I'm always picking things up. And so I'll have, I have boxes of things in, um, in a closet. I'm so that 
there's 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 skulls of you know whatever some of these are actually marked whether they're fox or raccoon or um or deer or what have you um and then i do have it's good this isn't smell of vision because this is a little stinky <laughs> but um so <laughs> where do you do you have fox <laughs> So it's in pieces now, but it can be glued back together. So you've got a, I've got a carp here, a, you know, a, a really big carp. And um, yeah, you've got his, his. Let me just do this. Okay, yeah, you can do that. I, I've got some um, some Fabrice and oh, wow. things in there too to keep away the bugs and all. But yeah, there's. That's actually a nice image right there. That's extraordinary. <laughs> yeah, that's fabulous. So, so we hauled that from the Chesapeake last year in the back of Jimmy's pickup, thank goodness. It still stinks. And uh, so then he built this cage for me so that I could hang it outside and let the, the sun and the weather get to it and take off, you know, a lot of the, the stuff. And, uh, but this one is still a little, you can still smell a little bit, but anyway. Um, so yeah, I'd have boxes of goodies. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. And then... And then from the Jersey Shore, this guy showed up in this little um, spider crab, I think glued back on one of his legs, but um, can you see that guy? Yeah. And so he's a little spider crab. And then, um, so he's in this one, or I think it's another spider crab, but yeah, I've got, I've got boxes of crabs too. <laughs> so I don't know how, if you can really, that one I call the evangelist. So um, I'm- Can you see that? Yep. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> so with that too, um, to get back to starting with a black and white sketch of the piece. So I get down, I mean, so this, this because with the sketch, I can erase, I can, um, you know, fiddle with things, I can change. So these, so these all start as, um, I'll take a big box and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put my little critters and such into it. I'll um, glue them together. I'll, I'll you know, do, just do whatever it takes, make my setup, um, you know, wire things up and such. And then, then I'll, do, I'll do a bunch of drawings. And when I'm satisfied with the drawing, I'll make a big one in black and white. And then I'll start in on um, the next, the next step would be I have these, watercolor papers that I do stamping on of um, with watercolor and gouache of uh, like leaves. I, I'll, I'll paint a, a leaf and I'll stamp it onto the paper. So I have all these patterns and colors going on. And then I'll, uh, I'll make a collage. I'll tear the paper up. You can see I use some of this. And I will um, put it all together. Um, you this, one? Uh, yeah. this is a great show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll start in with um, with some maybe some more watercolors. Um, um, I can't see it. Yeah, you're good, hon. Thank you. Yeah, yeah but it, it flips around. Yeah, I. You can see the paper cut out right here. Yeah, you can see like I'll stamp out. lace. I'll stamp um, because the lace I thought would be good for the the shell. Um, as a little bit of a background, and I'll, then I'll start in with, with the silver point, which is actually drawing with a piece of silver. So, um, and then you, it's just using, this is, this is a piece of silver, this is commercially available, piece of silver into a stylus. And then if you mark it on uh, a, a piece of painted paper, it's enough to, to take up the little particles of the silver and with tiny strokes, you just build up and build up and build up the darks. And it's never like really dark like charcoal, but there is a, a darkness that builds up. And then sometimes I'll put in some more watercolor or, or mix it with pastel pencils. Um, and then this is, this is another one called circadian rhythm as opposed to circadian rhythm because it's with cicadas. Oh, oh fabulous. Love it. That's, I want to give, um, that's really fabulous. Thank you. So it's wonderful to see your process and uh, your uh, 
your studies are so beautiful in and of themselves. And then you get to this extraordinary end product. Uh, thank you so much for letting us see the thank what you. takes place behind on the way to that. Um, I, I know there's some questions for you as well. Uh, Jen, what, what have we got for, I think maybe Bets and, and Jim. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, we have, here, we have a, so Jim, if you want to come on over, um, I'm going to kind of combine two questions together. Uh, one was, has your perception of light changed since you first began painting? And if so, what would you attribute that to? Um, and then the other one is, how did you come to choose the color palette that you use? What question? Who's that for? Both of you. Oh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I thought it was her and I wasn't really paying attention. It's really hard. But I think you said, uh, has our perception of the light changed? Is that the question? Yes, yes. How okay. has it changed and why? Well, time. You know, it's actually uh, hard to, you, you really, light and, and um, <laughs> it's a, it's a uh, light and color with painting, trying to paint light is two different things. So, Yes, it's changed. It's gotten very bright and probably my eyes have gotten worse because I'm getting older. And uh, yeah, I, I think I, uh, it, mine's changed because of the, uh, probably just the way I perceive light. And I think you perceive color. color better and light better the more you look at it and look for it and, it, and um, experience painting it. But your color palette probably changes well, too through Betsy, life. Betsy used to paint in very uh, monochromatic colors. Mo More monochromatic, traditional maybe or academic. Very monochromatic um, browns. And she, her, her thing when we first married was a lot of browns, okay? Or no color, I just black and white. Basically, yeah. Well, anyway, um, so yes. And as we progress, I, I've always tried to work with color. And I think that's might have, um, we might have come together on that and she learns from me and I learn from her. And I think our color perception, yes, it has gotten much brighter, much more colorful on both ends of, between both of us. Thank Is you. That yeah. <laughs> Great. What else do we have, Jen? Um, Someone asked about, so the piece being shown now is actually a collage. I think it was either the evangelist um, that you were showing. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me get that for you. you Here. Remember, it, it moves around. They got it. Yes. And and the question or? It it was. Is it actually? Is that a uh, collage? It is. So the paper that I showed you with uh, different marks on different stampings and colors. Do that. Okay. okay. Yeah. There you go. Thanks. Okay. Go ahead. Go. And um, so it, it's tearing on the paper, and I'm putting it on uh, like one board, and then putting it where I think it should be, working back and forth between the drawing and the collage. And then finally, where, when I want the paper, where I, when I have a paper where I want it to be, I glue it down and then start drawing on top of it. So those are mainly my colors are from the, 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 um, the paper to begin with that is then collaged together. Betsy, you told me that um, every two years you change media. And uh, I was wondering, okay. is that about every two years. Is that like a deliberate choice or is it an evolution that you've noticed in your interests? Uh, yeah, it just seems to be part of, uh, I guess, how my brain works. I, I think I go far enough, okay, I get this, now let's try something else. Uh, you know, sometimes we'll go to a museum or whatever, it's like, wow, that looks like fun to try. And so I'll just go to a different medium and uh, start a portfolio. And usually within about two years, for whatever reason, I'll start to go on to something else. Right now, I'm sort of in between two portfolios, between the oil pastels that I started uh, you know, this year and then the, um, the um, silver points 
uh, which I've done off and on through the years since learning it in college. Um, thanks. Um, but, you know, I've, I've gotten to the point the last couple of years with that now that I've developed sort of a way of working with it that I think is uh, original. And because um, sometimes I'll try something too, just to see what I can do with it that I haven't seen before, what I can do with it that can um, just push it um, a little bit more. Laura, what, what Bex is talking about, I think we both do it. It's a lot of experiment, experimentation in painting and art. In art in general. Put your face on there. And, uh, well, yeah, come on back on. Do you want to grab your chairs? And because I, I think we have a, some questions for both of you, and I hate to make you stand there. Or do you want to turn it around? What's what's it's comfortable for you? Little bit head, but it's <laughs> it's a, I hate that spot. <laughs> are you, are you comfortable um, as you are, or do you want to take a seat or? Put, no, do you want to put it back on the table? No, we're fine. We're, I'm fine. I'm fine here, unless you want to. Now, go ahead. What's your okay. questions? All right, good. Well, I'm, I, I think we have some for both of you, Jen. Uh, if I'm looking at the Q and A queue, it seems like there are some questions that both of them might answer. Uh, yes. One was about your website and challenges of keeping it current. Did you create <laughs> your website yourself, or did you use an outside service? Um, I did mine myself. And it needs to be, uh, the last time I updated it was probably the beginning of the year and there's some things I have to change. I, um, yeah, and I know it needs to be upgraded and stuff like that. And I don't know enough about it to really um, <laughs> probably do that. Yeah. I, I, and for yours? For mine, I have to update mine. It, it's, I think mean, it's two years since I put something on. And I think it's, a, I think it's because I work with a computer and business all my life that I just got tired of it. Uh, and I, I, you get this, it, you know, hey, you got Well, no, that, that's with Facebook. Well, either way, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. But, um, yeah, it's something we have to, unfortunately, modernize ourselves. We I, come back I think we're, we're just more physical people. So yeah. to sit us we down in help. front of a computer and, and stuff, it's just, yeah. it's something we don't <laughs> want to be doing. No, we're lazy. But, uh, no, we do, we need. We, just like to do other I, things. I, but I need help in that respect. Yeah, I, I know. We both do. I mean, yeah, actually, yeah, there's actually a, a lady that's up in um, your neck of the woods, where you guys are, that I think deals with a lot with, uh, I won't mention any names, so I don't want to do that during the computer thing here, that I have to, I would really like to get in contact with and let her help me out, or let us, let her, let her have her help us out with our social media, our social media and getting stuff on our uh, websites and promoting it better it's it's better to, it's it's hard to be all things yeah well so, i was yeah. just wondering we, we need to do that we're, we're negligent you know I, if artists are told and people in you know basically any sort of um endeavor are told you really need a website you need facebook you need instagram uh, you two exhibit so widely, you uh, win awards regularly. If you're not keeping your um, <laughs> websites current, how are you managing that? <laughs> well, uh, so, so if we're doing things like this and we're meeting the public like yeah. a, with gallery uh, uh, sitting and stuff like that, to me, that might go actually further. Who knows, right? I, I no, don't know. I, I think we really have to. We, well, really, yeah. we really need to do it. It's, it's advertising. And, uh, Yes, you're right. We are negligent and we need to do that. <laughs> Nobody you're... said that, Jim. Pardon? Nobody said that. Nobody said that. And I think, you know, I mean, I, there are artists who are great at it, but um, most people don't love keeping their website up. Um, yeah. And uh, Jen, I think we've got another question. Uh, yeah, we have one more question and that it should be an easy one. Who are your favorite artists? No, that's hard. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> You got Shield, with stuff Clint. Uh, there's a woman, woman by the name of. Uh, encourage everybody to look at this one. Her name is Jane Peterson, and she she, she has artwork. Jane Peterson. She has artwork over uh, one nice piece over at the um, Delaware Art, Art Museum. Museum. Um, uh, there, there's New Hope artists. There's another. Uh, who's that woman up in New Hope? Uh, oh, Kovic. Yeah, Frank Kovic. Kovic. 
Kopich, Fran Kopich, I guess her name is. Yeah, people like, yeah, there's just a lot of humor in her work. Uh, Van Gogh, of course, <laughs> he's the master. Uh, and uh, Egon Schiel, uh, these, these people are all geniuses. Yeah. And uh, they, they just, they die too early. But anyway, they're, they're, they're my favorite. Your turn. Uh, I don't even want to answer that question. I, I really can't. I, I never liked that question. There's just so many. Um, just, I would pick a different one probably every day. Well, I love Jim that you mentioned Fern Coppett. She's, you know, was a, definitely a mill artist. So we appreciate that. Uh, we take great pride in her uh, legacy. I also wanted to pick up, this was one of the things I personally wanted to ask you, is you mentioned that you're um, uh, inspired by the German expressionist movement. And, uh, and, and, and now you're talking about Egon Schiele. I'm just interested in your, um, uh, you, we didn't get a chance to look at it today, but I could see that in your portraits that you've been painting more recently. Am, <laughs> I, am I making that up? Am I? Do we have one available to take a quick peek at? We've got a, a couple well, of minutes. I have, I have two. If, could I run downstairs and get one that I really like? And, and they're actually, believe it or not, they're not self-portraits, but I use myself as a um, as a model for, especially the nose. See that nose? Anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, that one there. Do you want this one? Yeah. Okay. Now, let me go downstairs real quick. Betsy's going to show you one, and I'm going to run down real quick. I'm, there's one I really, really like. And All I right. really We'd love to see it. Pardon? We'd love to see it. We've just got a couple minutes, Jim. We promise yeah. we, we close I'll, up. So we'll talk, right with up. Betsy, or we'll talk with Betsy about this. Oh, wow, that's great. Well, what do yes. you have to say about it, Betsy? <laughs> what do you think? What's your perspective on the on uh, Jim's portraits? I really like them, and um, the ones he's been doing more lately have a lot of feel in them. Um, another artist he really likes and admires is Kaim Sautin, and you can see that in this particular one for sure. And he's bringing another one up here. This is my favorite of the ones that he's done. I think this one has a really nice feel to it. And a nice expression in the eyes. He's really been working on, I think, expressions in the face. Yeah. The, the, eyes are, the eyes are expression. These are my hands. I used the face myself in a mirror. I just, I did a nice kind of nice little drawing of it. Whew, man, I ran upstairs. <laughs> anyway, I like this kind of stuff. Have you, shown, sorry. No, but sorry to interrupt you. Please go ahead. I can hold uh, it up here. Yeah, we're gonna hold it down the lights hitting you. Um, what yeah, was your question? Uh, no, I'm so, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I, um, I, I, uh, sorry, there's a little bit of a lag, I think, on my end. So I didn't want to interrupt what you were saying about this. You, you, it's your hands and you were a little bit of a self-portrait. Well, it's, they're not self-portraits. I use myself as a model. I got nobody else to, to reference. And um, I've been around enough guys in construction I mean, there's some like haggard people around that are really neat to look at. And uh, I like the character of uh, some, of the, some of the guys I used to work with. And of right. course, they all have big hands because they've been in construction. You know, they right. probably have arthritis. They probably broke a few fingers. And, um, you know, the face. I got a really, well, my website, if anybody goes to the website, I do have a, a farmer holding a chicken. And uh, that whole body and the chick, we have our, we, we raise chickens, the chicken is our chicken, and the body's me, but the face, I kind of created on my own, and um, I forget how I did it, but that's one of my best pieces, and it's like twice the size of this one here. Yeah, so. I think the portraits on you, before you update your um, website, I think everybody should go look at your, look at your portraits, which are yeah. really extraordinary uh, character studies. Yeah, if you look at the guy's hands, they're, they're huge. And most construction guys I've ever been around, they're, they're just, they, the hands are huge. Uh, these guys are like, you think basketballs could palm a basketball? I mean, these guys can palm like a watermelon. I mean, these guys have like huge hands. And, and they're, like I said, they're all arthritic. Uh, they're twisted. It, it's, well, it's so much character. But anyway, that's, that, is that your question? Would that help? Oh, that, 
that was it. And I, I have so many more. Um, I guess I, if you if you have the website addresses, then we would we would love to. Um, let's see if we. I don't know if we can quickly put them up in chat. We've gone over our time. We'd love the two of you to come back on on the screen first of all, and then yeah. if we can get the website. If we can't get them into the chat before we say goodbye, then we'll definitely. Um, so Jimmy's is artbyjimgreen.com, artbyjimgreen.com, and mine is betsgreen.com. Betsgreen.com. That's great. Thank you both so much. And uh, thank you both so much for spending uh, this time with us, taking an hour, being our first art talk. Um, we had, <laughs> it's been a fun uh, start and uh, a little bit wild, but we uh, so much enjoyed talking with you. Yeah, I want to thank you and Jen and everybody. That's, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for the- You guys put so much work into the show, into working with us this week with Zoom, so thank you. It was fun. Well, I just want to say that um, we have had a, a wonderful time putting the show together. We've had the pleasure of speaking with you and uh, your other artists, your, your colleagues who've been in the show, and we've just had the best time talking with you oh, all. Great. So that's, that, uh, that's, we wanted to share that with everyone. So thank you again. Thank you to Jen McHugh, our social media leader, who's been uh, sharing so many of our artists' work. And thank you all of you attendees for coming. Uh, we are, we would love to hear back from you. If you register by email, then we will be sending you a little, uh, um, uh, an email asking if you'd like to hear about our next one. We've got Joe Gersak is going to uh, do a demonstration of how artists construct a painting. Uh, that's on Saturday, the 20, I'm sorry, Sunday, the 25th, that, 5 to 6 p.m. We'll be promoting that on social media. And uh, Joe is another award winner. You're both award winners. Um, we'd love to talk to all of our artists and we'll see if we can, we can make that happen. Thank you, attendees. Thank you, panelists. Uh, thank you all from me. I'm Laura Womack. Thank you, bye.